What's up guys, and man am I hyped. Wow, um, we have a load of new information for Pokemon Sun and Moon, even more than we expected basically. So, um, new trailers, I'm just going to jump straight into this. We're going to start off with Eradicate, um, we're loading Eradicate, we assume we're going to get one because of course we had Eradicate, so yes, we have proper you know, information about Eradicate now on the site, as well as Alone Eradicate, as you can see, it's a bit chubbier it seems than the normal Eradicate and it's got big, big cheeks, um, hence gluttony I suppose is ability. But, you know, uh, there are apparently the urban areas in the main habitat, so it's higher in calories, hence they've become a bit more hefty, fat, etc. So maybe higher health points, for example. Uh, and we also know that Alone Raticate is the totem Pokemon of one of the trials. So we shall wish to talk about more about that later on, though, however. So, yes, so, 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 so much stuff to go over here. We have some new Pokemon as well. First up, we have Type Null. Yes, Type Null. It's a Pokemon name. It is the synthetic Pokemon. It's a pure normal type, 6 foot 3, turn of 65.7 pounds, and its ability is Battle Armor. And as you can look at it, it looks like a combination of different Pokemon. Apparently, the Pokemon wearing a mask has been dubbed Null, meaning nothing. The shapes of its front and high legs are clearly different. The reason is that Type Null was constructed to synthesize the strengths of various Pokemon, enabling to adapt it to any situation. So this is really much, pretty much Pokemon fusion, or Pokemon synthesizing, I don't know. The mask fitted to Type Null's head is a piece of equipment designed to control its latent powers. It's extremely heavy, so it also serves to hinder Type Null's agility. To complete a certain mission, there was need of a Pokemon powerful enough to rival those Pokemon often spoken of in mythology. So, a certain mission, maybe that's a link, yeah, maybe hinting at something for the game, who knows. But it seems like this would be a pretty powerful Pokemon, maybe like, you know, Drodigan sort of equivalent. Who knows how, you know, quite how powerful it's going to be. Um, but it's a very interesting Pokemon. Type Null is a very, very interesting name as well. Then we have some more, of course. First up we have Jan... M Jang... Jangmoo, which is the scaly Pokemon, it's a pure dragon type, and it's sort of like a fossil Pokemon almost, I would say. Uh, its abilities are bulletproof or soundproof, so it's very proof. Um, but Jangmoo has a pride of a warrior, although it remains humble about its capabilities. In its pursuit to become stronger, it never neglect neglects its training. It uses the scales on its head for both offense and defense, and never turns its back to its enemies. Many trainers see his behavior and take it as proof that Jangmoo is a valiant Pokemon. They gather in harsh locales like canyons, hence that island where it will be found, when no, no other Pokemon or people are around to live together as they train. So I'm hoping for a really cool evolution of this guy. This is gonna, ah, oh, I felt like it's gonna be amazing. I'm really hyped, I'm really hyped. I am really hyped. And we also have another new Pokemon, but it's quite different. But first, before we talk about that, we actually have to talk about the Aether Foundation. Yes, the Aether Foundation. They are the owners of the island in the middle of the other region called the Aether Paradise. And they seem to be like scientists, uh, almost studying Pokemon, but their goal is to care for Pokemon that have been hurt. So they've constructed this artificial island and they provide shelter for Pokemon, but also conduct various research products. And it seems that the, you know, obviously the main character is going to be able to visit it during their adventure. They're led by Elusamine, the president of the Aether Foundation. Then we have Faba, the branch chief with green sunglasses apparently. They're a signature accessory. Ha. Then we have Wick, who is the assistant branch chief of Aether Paradise. And she's loved by all the employees, apparently. And then we have the employees of the Aether Foundation, almost like an anti-evil team, it seems. Uh, they're employees of the Aether Foundation and Kev Pokemon. Their uniforms appear to depend on which division they belong to. So maybe this is hinting that maybe other f other Aether Foundations will be present in other regions, maybe? Because the division seems to be, you know, the Aether Paradise in the Lola. So who knows? Maybe that means, like, different islands, for example. Who knows? But the Aether Foundation. Linking into that, we have this new Pokemon I mentioned, or new Pokemon. We have Ultra Beasts whatever they are. In the Alona region, rumours are flying about mysterious creatures known as Ultra Beasts. They possess mighty powers and could pose a threat to humans and Pokemon, so they are feared. It also appears the Aether Foundation is conducting research on these beasts. And according to another one, multiple of them, are re uh, multiple of them exist, each of them called by a code name. First up, the only one we've seen so far is UB01, Ultra Beast 1. B1's body is composed of a glass-like substance, however it's constantly changing shapes, never settling on one. What evidence of something like a survival instinct can be observed in UBA1, no one knows whether it has a will of its own or any emotions. It's said that, for some reason, its movements resemble that of a young girl. Okay, interesting. So, it seems like these are going to be another sort of branch of legendaries, particular to Alola, possibly. Ultra Beasts, so basically legendary Pokemon I would see. Maybe like a mix of normal and legendary, who knows. 
exactly obvious one. Obviously, this one's based on a jellyfish almost, or like a, a man of war sort of sort of thing there. So it's quite interesting. Apparently, they pose a threat to humans and Pokemon, so maybe they they will be the the true enemies of these games. Team Skull will just be a distraction, and maybe we'll have to catch them or defeat them all. Uh, maybe they won't even be catchable. Maybe they'll just be you know people things we have to actually kill because doesn't doesn't mention their Pokemon at all. They're just called Ultra Beasts. Mysterious creatures not mentioned to Pokemon at all, and they pose a threat to Pokemon, so maybe they're a new branch, but you know, not quite Pokemon, not quite human, maybe something else. Who quite knows? But I'm going to tell you this, guys, I am not quite sure about the intentions of the Aether Foundation quite yet. They seem like a very shady organization, they have a few admins, and it seems like they could be up to something with the Ultra Beasts, so I don't quite trust them yet. But we have some more stuff to talk about. The first thing is a pair of trainers investigating Zygarde, and we have seen these pair before. We have Cena and Dexio from Pokemon X and Y, and they are in the Alola region, apparently looking for Zygarde. Apparently they show up as we progress through the adventure, and uh, it tells us they appeared as, uh, as assistants, uh, so it's no, it's no secret. But they give us an item called a Zygarde Cube, and ask us to collect Zygarde cores and cells during our adventure in the Alola region. So they can be found all over. Who said the cells would be available? I did! Ha ha! Anyway, so, objects giving you off light can be found in various locations around the Alola region. These are Zygarde cores and Zygarde cells. You can collect them in the cube you receive. If you collect lots of them, the path to finding Zygarde may become clear. So, you know, once you collect a lot, enough of them, you have to be, you know, you're able to go and find Zygarde, basically. Seems to be how this is going to work, so I'm really excited for Zygarde's, you know, intro into the story here. We also have some information about Team Skull, or another member of Team Skull. We have Gladion. This young man leads his strength to Team Skull, lends his strength to Team Skull as an enforcer. He places a high value on being strong in Pokemon battles. His partner Pokemon is the mysterious Type Null, so he has the really powerful Type Null. So I'm guessing that Pokemon won't be available during the adventure, possibly catchable afterwards, or possibly a gift Pokemon afterwards. Interesting, but that's another member of Team Skull. We now have Guzma, Plumeria, and Gladion. Gladion is not mentioned like Team Skull admin, he's just Gladion. But he might be the enforcer. Team Skull enforcer Gladion sort of thing. So it's just another admin sort of sort of type guy here. But we ever have some other information about the games themselves, and that is, as I used to talk talking about in several videos recently, time will work differently in Pokemon Sun and Moon. And this is that Pokemon Moon is 12 hours out of sync with your local time. So while you're it's whilst, whilst midday in Pokemon Sun and in real life, it's midnight in Pokemon Moon. This is good, I suppose. It gives you know a difference between the, the sort of the games. But it says, except for a few scenes, time in Pokemon Sun and Moon is tied to the actual time. So Pokemon Sun operates on the same time as your DS, but time in Pokemon World, in, in the world of Pokemon Moon, shifted by 12 hours, as I mentioned. But see, except for a few scenes, so there will be a few scenes where time will work differently. So maybe you're encountering your legendary and it's perpetually sun. Maybe you're encountering the legendary moon, it's always nighttime sort of thing. So this is going to be very interesting indeed. Um, and it's very interesting as well. And then it also says some Pokemon appear in Pokemon Sun and Moon are different, including Solgaleo and Lunar, which hold the key to the story. It seems that some Pokemon that appear in Totem, as Totem Pokemon in Trials are also different. Yes, we're told. We have a Lolan Raticate now, and on the first island you either encounter Young Goose if you're playing in Pokemon Sun, or a Lolan Raticate if you're playing in Pokemon Moon. So you get a difference there. I'm guessing maybe all of the Totems will, will switch over. And you'll have Lorantis, Pokemon Sun, and maybe an, a, a Bond Sweets Evolution, Pokemon Moon. I feel that'd be really cool. But it's going to be really interesting to see how they plan, the, you know, sort of how they play these time differences, how they're all going to fit in, whether they'll be, you know, obviously you know, in I think the Japanese trailer it's shown like you can catch Drifloon in Pokemon Sun, but in Pokemon Moon you can catch Mistrevis at the same time. So it's really quite interesting how that's going to work. We're not done quite yet though. There's also a new in, uh, sort of section on the Pokemon website um, from Shig Shigeru Oromori. Who was the director of the games? Why they chose Sun and Moon? We have a original plan, a little form of life, and they wanted to replicate that basically. Why the two titles take place in different worlds? Between Pokemon Sun and Moon, there's a difference of 12 hours. This is our first attempt at making such a great difference between two game versions. In the Alola region, the Pokemon you encounter on the same route can vary between day and night, and so this time difference allows players to have a completely different experience. And it doesn't stop at Pokemon, some events are also different from one version to the other, so I hope you can enjoy both worlds to the fullest. So, yeah, I guess it makes sense to have, you know, it's really hard, you know, you're not, most of the time you're not going to be playing Pokemon Sun, you know, Pokemon Moon at night. So, you know, you have one where you play in the daytime, one play in the night, something. Hopefully you guys know what I mean. Why we're so particular about expressing night and evening? 
To show the Alola region's rich and beautiful na rich nature and beautiful towns, we were very particular about the lighting. Thanks to that, the same location can have a completely different appearance depending on the time, sometimes wrapped in the gentle glow of moonlight, sometimes illuminated by the crimson of the sun setting over the sea, as you can see here. At times, the same event will feature different natural phenomena in the two versions, which can only be seen in Pokemon Sun or Moon. Eclipses, possibly? That's maybe a hint there? Who knows? Or like red sun at night, red sky in the morning. We've poured ourselves into our work so you can feel the atmosphere of the games, and they really seem, do seem to have an atmosphere. And then finally, before we finish up today, we also have a new feature called the Poker Finder, which is linked into the Rotom Poker decks, or the Rotom decks. Basically, it allows you to take pictures of Pokemon. You find it's loaded in the Rotom decks, and you can use it in certain photo spots scattered around the region, and you just get it on your map and you can do it. So, the pictures you take will be evaluated, and as you take better pictures, more features like the ability to zoom in become available. So, you get like likes for them, it seems, so maybe you earn some points, you can cash those points in somewhere for upgrades to your camera or items and stuff, so that'd be really interesting. So, I'm really excited for this game, guys. Let me know down below what you think of all these new feature reveals, the Ultra Beast, the Aether Foundation, the new Pokemon as well, let me know down below, I'm really hyped for this game, and all these games I suppose, and I'm guessing tomorrow I'll have a full trailer analysis, because you know you have the English trailer and also have your, you have the Japanese trailer which has a load of extra scenes and areas in, which is going to be a very good analysis point for me, but for now, I'll be seeing you next time, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and let me know what you think about the new features down below, but for now that's it for me for today, I'll be seeing you next time, thank you for watching. Goodbye, my friends.